Welcome back. In this video, I'll show how to set up MySQL and SQL Alchemy so we can get started on modeling some data. The first step will be to install MySQL. These instructions are for Ubuntu, but you should be able to find instructions for any operating system out there. So open up a terminal. And the first thing we'll do is the usual apt update just to make sure everything's up to date in our our package manager. Looks good. So then we'll do sudo apt install MariaDB server and MariaDB client. And yes, we do want to install it. Now we can do some configuration real quick. So we'll do sudo mysql secure installation. So enter the current password, which by default is none. I want to set the password for root. I'm setting the password here to password and I do not advise doing this for an actual database. This is just to make the code a little bit more easy to read so you can tell like this is the username and this is the password. In your actual application, do not use password as your password or pretty much anywhere else for that matter. I will remove anonymous users. We'll be logging in as root in this application. Um, yeah, I'm going to disable it remotely. It's not being forwarded outside anywhere right now, so all of the access is going to be local, but let's disable remote access just in case. And yeah, I'll get rid of the test database. We're not going to be using that. And reload the privilege table. Cool. So now I need to enable the uh, password login for my root user. Use the MySQL table. That shouldn't be user, it should be use. Alright. Update user set plugin equals MySQL native password where user equals root. And flush privileges just to update all the Tables, I spelled something wrong. Probably works better if you write privileges instead of privileges. Cool. Now we can quit. And MySQL is configured. Now, in our application, all of our access to MySQL is going to be through SQL Alchemy, which is an object relation mapper. Basically, what that means is it allows us to write Python code 
that represents our model and represents our interaction with that model without actually having to write the, the raw SQL code. And this makes our code a bit more portable because we can change the SQL backend. Like maybe we could use Postgres if we found out that we didn't we didn't like the way MySQL handled it. Um, so it makes it a little bit more portable. It also cleans up the code a bit conceptually. Um, you can focus on just your interaction with the ORM instead of the, the details of SQL underneath it. It has some convenience functions to, to handle some of those details, which is nice. So we're going to be using the Flask web framework too. And there's a module for Python called Flask SQL Alchemy that handles the, the overlap between Flask and SQL Alchemy. It makes it a little bit easier to deal with SQL Alchemy and Flask. So we need to install all of those packages. And you can do that just by doing a you know pip3 flask sql alchemy and then flask underscore sql alchemy will install that helper module um, and you'll want to use the command correctly for installing python packages cool on my system i've already got them all installed so that's good Oh, I'll need one more Python module, and that's the uh, pi mysql module. So just like we did that before. Cool. So that's going to be what SQL Alchemy uses to interface with mysql. Like I said, SQL Alchemy can handle different SQL backends, and it'll take a different module to do the interfacing for that for each backend. Now I can go ahead and create a database in MySQL. So let's log into MySQL and then create database. We're going to call it feed reader. So now we've got our database set up. Uh, we've got all of our Python modules installed and we should be ready to go. In the next video we'll start actually modeling these uh, these tables using SQL Alchemy. So bye!